Armando Hasrugan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasrugan and like. And also you can ask questions, answer some questions and post some interesting things including artworks. Please. And change the quality settings to the highest one such as 720p for better graphics. We're continuing on on somatic recombination also known as VDJ recombination or for antibodies. So as we've learned, progenitor B cells uh, makes immature B cells. And a process called som uh, somatic recombination or VDJ recombination um, provides a unique antibody for the immature B cell. So for example, a, a progenitor B cell makes an immature B cell and another progenitor B cell makes another immature B cell. Uh, important information to know is that there are two types of light chains. Not two types as in the genes shuffling within the light chain gene, but there are actually two classes of light chains as in um, two classes. So for example, if we look at these two immature B cells and we compare the antibodies, they both have antibodies. However, the light chain class is different. The light, light chain type is different. One is lambda light chain and the other one is kappa light chain. And so as you can see, this would increase the diversity of these antibodies. So if there's two light chains, two types of light chains, this would mean that there are two types of light chain genes. However, there's, all, there's only one type of light uh, heavy chain. Uh, which consists of many type of um, constant regions. But we won't get into that right now. So, for example, if we go into this progenitor B cell, chromosome 22 has the lambda light chain gene. Chromosome 2 has a kappa light chain gene. And chromosome 14 has a heavy chain uh, gene. So as you can see, with the, the, the two types of light chain and the heavy chain mixing up, we can have a diverse um, types of antibodies. So for example, if we look at the chromosome 2 uh, kappa light chain gene and the chromosome 14 heavy chain gene, we can see how they can mix up to produce a unique antibody. So let's begin with the heavy chain gene. As I mentioned in my previous video, there's not only one variable region, one diversity region, one joining region. There are actually many types of variable diversity and joining segments. And so for example, in the heavy chain gene of chromosome 14, we have about 1 to 40 variable regions one to 23 diversity uh, segments and one to six joining segments and we have the constant mu which will essentially transcribe uh, for immunoglobin N antibody. So as you can see the mixing up of these variable regions, diversity regions and joining segments will create a unique antibody. So what first happens with the heavy chain gene is it goes through DJ recombination which essentially is where one of the diversity segments and one of the joining segments bind together. So in this case we have uh, here, diversity segment and joining segment bind together. Next what happens after DJ recombination is VDJ recombination where essentially the previously bound D and J will uh, bind to a, one of the variable segments and then be transcribed. So in this case it bound to a V1 vari uh, variable segment 1 and then we have the diversity 2 and joining 2 and the constant mu actually consists of five con uh, four constant regions. And essentially this is already an RNA. And because it's an RNA, it has to go through splicing to remove the introns, which will make it mRNA, and then a protein. And this protein is, uh, is the heavy chain part of the immunoglobin. It consists of variable 1, D2, J2, and the four constant regions, which will fit in to this structure, which is an immunoglobin M antibody. So what about the light chain? As we mentioned, the light chain, we're looking at the kappa light chain gene. And both the light chain, the lambda and the kappa, do not have a diversity segments. So, the kappa light chain gene consists of about 1 to 38 variable segments, about 1 to 5 joining segments, and a kappa constant region. So it doesn't consist of a diversity segment. And the first process that occurs is JV recombination, where the joining region will bind to one of the variable regions. In this case, a, var a variable segment 2 will bind to joining segment 3, not uh, D3 this is meant to be J3, it's a mistake. And then this is an RNA, and because it's an RNA, it has to go through splicing, the removal of the introns, which will produce mRNA and essentially protein, consisting of variable of segment 2, joining segment 3, not D3, and a constant kappa, which will essentially make the antibody the light chain uh, part of this immunoglobin M antibody. So now, how does the actual recombination process occur? How does the JV recombination process occur, for example, in the kappa light chain gene? So if we have this kappa light chain gene again, consisting of uh, 
just one, two, 38 variable regions, and then one, two, five joining segments, and the kappa constant. So what is the process that actually occurs through this recombination? So if we look just at the numbers, 38 variable regions and about five joining segments, up to five joining segments, will not actually produce a diverse amount of antibody if you do the math. And so what happens is that actually new nucleotides can be added during the VJ recombination process to increase the diversity and specificity of each antibody. To learn how new nucleotides are actually added in, we have to learn about the recombinational process um, itself, and so the proteins involved in it, etc. So if we take a part of the kappa light chain gene, for example, we have three variable segments and two joining segments, V1, V2, V3, and J1 and J2. Now the segments, the V and J segments that can undergo recombination, have a specific motif called the RSS, the recomb recombination segment sequence. And the recombination segment sequence can either be a 23 base pair spacer or a 12 base pair spacer. Within the kappa light chain gene, the variable segments usually have the 12 base pair spacer, basically 12 base pairs uh, in between a heptamer and nanomer sequences. And the joining segments, the J segments, usually have the 23 base pair spacer in between the heptamer and the nanomer sequences. Now these motifs, the RSS, have a specific special rule called a 23-12 rule, where essentially only a 12 and a 23 can bind together. So for example, V1 and V2 cannot bind together because they both are 12 base pair sequences. Um, same as V2 and V3, they can't. J1 and J2, they can't. But V2 and J1 can. Now in order for recombination to occur, there are two ways to initiate recombination using the 23-12 rule. One is for uh, the gene to create a hairpin loop, essentially. So here we can see a hairpin loop formation where V2 and J1 are parallel with each other. And so the 12 base spacer and the 23 base spacer with the heptamer and nanomer sequences on either side can undergo recombination. And through recombination, essentially proteins, certain proteins which we will look into soon, will cut off these base pair sequences and so we're left with V2 and J1 bound together like so. And then through VJ recombination we get DNA with the joining V and J which will then get transcribed to RNA which will then go through splicing to remove the introns which will make mRNA and essentially the protein. And this is the protein that is the kappa light chain which will essentially make the light chain of the particular antibody and there's also the constant region in this protein. However, it is important to note that actually during the recombinational process to increase the specificity and diversity of the light uh, chain of the light chain, new nucleotides are added. So new nucleotides are added during this recombinational process, which we'll look into later on. But for now, let's look at the other way that recombination can occur between the base spacer and between the V and J segments. So in this other uh, type of 23-12 rule of recombination, we have a sort of tangled configuration, not like the hairpin loop that we just saw. So in this tangled configuration, we can see that variable segment 3 and joining segment 2 are aligned with the 12 base pair spacer of v, V3 and the 23 base pair spacer of J2 which can undergo recombination because they're next to each other. So through recombination, the variable segment 3 and joining segment 2 can bind together, which will essentially form DNA and then RNA. This RNA will then get spliced up to remove everything else, leaving the var variable segment 3 and joining segment 2 with a constant region. And this will be the, another, another type of kappa light chain for the antibody. And as mentioned, that the heavy chain gene and also the light chain gene consist of about up to 40 uh, variable segments and up to five joining segments. And if these mix around, it will not actually give us a diversity for antibodies. And that is why I've mentioned that actually through recombination, new nucleotides randomly can be added in, which will increase the diversity and specificity. 
and we'll look at to uh, at this process and actually the proteins involved in the recombination process itself. So in both the heavy chain and the light chain genes, these proteins are essentially the same. So if I take a segment of this gene, the light chain kappa gene again, we have variable uh, segment 2 and variable segment 3 and joining segment 1. So essentially what happens first in recombination is that RAG1 and 2 proteins will bind to the motifs of the RSS of a 12 base spacer and a 23 base spacer. This will, this will essentially cause both the RAG1 and 2 to bind together because they have affinity for each other. And when they bind together, they will form a sort of hairpin loop with the V2 and J1 uh, parallel with each other. And essentially what happens next is that RAG1 and 2 will then cleave off this motif the recombination, recombination uh, signal sequence, the RSS. Following this, other proteins such as Q70 and Q80 will bind onto the segments, the variable segment and the joining segment. Q proteins essentially do is initiate repair by forming a hairpin loop from where the RAG1 and 2 has broken off the RSS. And after forming a hairpin loop, other proteins will come into the system. A DNA protein kinase and Artemis will open the hairpin loop which was formed by the Q proteins. And then following this, another protein will come called terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase or TDT, which will basically add new nucleotides um, into the separated variable and joining segments. And the TDT adds nucleotides randomly. Now following this, uh, because the joining segment and the variable segments are separated, DNA ligase and another protein called XRCC4 will ligate the ends together, which will essentially form uh, a repaired and unique V2 and J1 recombinated segment. And so this will produce a unique type of kappa light chain, essentially. So through recombination, not only are the variable segments and joining segments and diversity segments are shuffled together, but new nucleotides are added through each uh, recombination, somatic recombination process, whether it's in the light chain gene or in the heavy chain gene. So I hope you can appreciate the diversity and specificity the antibodies can produce uh, through B cell maturation. And that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and please share. Thank you.